So the first step to making a strong opening is to cut the excess intro out of your song. And so I go right here where the waveform is at the highest because that's when the bass is hitting. And I'm going to align the shot right on the bass hit. And then I'm going to turn off the volume of my clip because we're going to do some time remapping and we don't want the sound to get all distorted. And I'm going to put in a gunshot sound right at that bass hit. And on top of that, I'm going to put a little whoosh in. It's a different it's a sound effect where you can like kind of amplify the bass a little bit so that the bass hits just a little bit stronger. And you can customize that to your liking. And then on top of that, I'm going to customize the opacity so that it fades in at the beginning. So now I'm going to play around with the time remapping a little bit, just make it a little bit cleaner, make the velocity curves look nice. So right after it shoots, I'm going to have it slow down for a little bit, maybe to like here. So I'm just going to stretch that out, and I'm actually going to make it easy out, which means that everything before it is normal, normal speed. And then afterwards, you can like click the graph editor, and you'll see that the the curve is like able to be changed so like you can have it speed up when it's uh, curved upwards that means it's speeding up or you can slow it down by curving it downwards you don't want it to go down unless you're trying to have like reverse time which is a little crazy but in this case I want it to gradually slow down so I put it up kind of like a straight line with this Normally, I might play around with the time remapping a little more, but for time's sake, I'm just going to leave it like that, and we're going to move on to the next effect. So now you want to go up here and create, you want to go layer, new, and create a solid. You could press Control y to do this or go up there. And you want a black solid, so you click the color, go all the way down to black, and press OK. And then you want to go to your effects and presets and search CC JAWS. And this will allow you to add black bars. So you want to bring the completion up to around 90 and put the height to zero. And so now go slightly after the shot goes off. So right about there. And add a keyframe for completion. And then go right before the shot and bring it way down. And then if you use the whoosh effect, it, it's kind of a gradual increase in bass. I'll show you what I mean. You can hear, the, hear it slowly build up as this graph builds up. So I'm going to go right to the beginning of that. And I'm going to bring the completion to 100 so that there's no black bars. And then if you press U on your keyboard, it'll bring up the keyframes. And I'm just going to do an easy in on this one where it's fully complete. And I'm going to drag it like this. And this makes it so that it'll come slow at first. Here, I'm going to add it to this as well. Easy out. That way it comes even slower. See, it's horizontal, so that means it's coming in slower. And then it'll just kind of shoot in and then go away. All right, so another thing I do is add a solid and I go up here where this this little tool is and you can use the ellipse tool and you have to make sure you have the new solid clicked and then you make a little circle here and then down in this corner you click inverted and you click on the mask one and turn turn the feather up to about 250. So then you have this vignette effect. And I like to keyframe this with the bass drop as well, just so you can get extra kick. It's like going from dark to light. So if you click, let's see, right about here where the black bars are normal, create a keyframe for mask path, and then go two frames earlier. And for some reason, you have to have mask, ex mask expansion clicked in order to play with these. But yeah, so click Mac, Mask Expansion, and then bring these way in. Like so. And then go way out here. 
and just bring them super far out so that there's no there's no color in there no no like black edges that way it's like the normal clip and then see it just makes it a little darker to light now what you want to do is go to your actual clip and go to transform and we're going to keyframe the scale. So right as the shot goes off, right there, keyframe it and scale it in. And then come to about where the clip is ending. We'll end it like right here. And just scale it down to about 105. That way it zooms in real fast right away and then slowly goes away. And then on top of that, you're going to go to your effects and presets and search slider control to add a wiggle effect. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do Alt, Shift, Equal on your position down here. And you have to type in wiggle. And then this first number is going to be the frequency of the, rivel, the wiggle. So how often it happens. So I'm gonna do eight times per second and then comma. And this number represents the amount of the wiggle. So how much the position is going to be changing. So right now, just put zero, and then you have to highlight this. And you click this little swirly tool, and you want to drag it all the way up to the slider. And so now, it's linked to the slider control. So as you play with the slider, it'll change the amount of the wiggle. You can see, like, 600 displacement. So right as the shot hits, put a keyframe. And then once it's all zoomed in, Usually I add around like 40 or maybe 45 and you can see it's wiggling now and I go just a second or two afterwards and then turn it to zero. So that's the basic idea on how to get the clip to pop and after the, at this point you can basically add whatever special effects you want on top of that. Uh, one of the typical ones to do is add a CC light burst. And you can play with the ray length. So set it to zero before the shot. And then after the shot, you can turn it up to whatever level you want. I think around 25 is a good level. And then just slowly have it fade away. So it'll look like this. 